good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for connecting to this uh, press conference. Um, and a warm welcome, of course, on education, research, and innovation for Europe's digital decade, on the Digital Education Action Plan, the European Research Area, and European Education Area. It's an honor for me to welcome to the press room Margrethe Vestaya, the Executive Vice President for Europe for the Digital Fit for the Digital Age. Marguerite Skinas, the Vice President for Promoting Our European Way of Life, and Commissioner Maria Gabriel, Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth. The Vice Presidents and the Commissioner will now present the three initiatives to you, and then we have time for your questions. And without further ado, I give the floor to the Executive Vice President. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and I think this is indeed a, a very good uh, occasion to be here. Uh, today, we adopted three uh, strategic uh, uh, proposals a communication on European uh, research area, uh, a new digital uh, education action plan, and a communication on a renewed uh, European research area. Uh, I will focus on the two last. Uh, and let's start with the digital education action plan. Uh, the key lessons of COVID-19 crisis is that ethical, ethical, <laughs> digital, probably also ethical, but in case digital, education should no longer be viewed as an island on its own, but considered an integral part of all education and training. Uh, those words were not mine. Uh, they come from a teacher uh, who shared feedback during our uh, stakeholder uh, consultation. And I think it's, very, it's a very good way of, of stating an essential point. Uh, ethical, no, well, here we go again. Uh, digital education uh, is now an integral uh, part of our future. It is uh, it's a matter of utmost uh, importance. Uh, and this is why we have suggested that 20% of the recovery and resilience facility is invested in digital transformation. Uh, and two of the seven flagships we have prioritized for the recovery, they are reskilling and upskilling of people and the modernization of public services, including education. So today, the Digital Education Action Plan proposes to take uh, this journey forward. Uh, it's designed to support member states because most of the competences uh, in the field lies with them in achieving uh, two priorities. Uh, the first priority looks at the enablers of digital education. Uh, what should we do to create uh, a digital education system that is high performing and that works for all? Uh, as for most educational challenges, uh, one needs to start young. Uh, and that is why one of the first things we, we need to do is to make sure that our schools are probably equipped uh, to run uh, their digital transformation. Uh, specific guidance will be uh, developed uh, to assist them in this process. It will look at all aspects from network connectivity to basic technological equipment uh, to new teacher training and innovative uh, teaching methods. Uh, modernizing education uh, is also about adapting what we teach and how we teach to uh, completely, uh, a completely new technological reality. Uh, we will develop a framework on the content of digital education and produce uh, guidelines on the use of artificial intelligence and data in teaching and learning. So when we teach and learn, that we do that in a way that makes the best and safest use of technology. Our second strategic priority uh, consists in enhancing digital skills and competences. Uh, today, more than one in five young people they fail to reach uh, the basic level of digital skills. Uh, giving people access to upskilling, to reskilling, is an absolute necessity. Today, to do so, uh, we first need to make sure, of course, that teachers themselves feel uh, confident uh, and have the access to require the right skills. And that is why we expand our current competence scheme to give them the opportunity to get the training uh, and the skills uh, needed. In parallel, a new certificate will be created to serve as a kind of a passport uh, for all Europeans 
to indicate our level of digital uh, prof uh, proficiency. A bit like, I think, what we all know today for languages, that you have sort of different scores and that will tell your possible employer how good you are at speaking uh, French or English, uh, Romanian or whatever. Now, just as for our educational system, no digital and green transition will ever be possible without a well-functioning research uh, system. A research system that is able to bring us groundbreaking and marketable innovation. And that is why the second uh, thing that I will talk about is the new European research area. A renewed European research area can only thrive if we say, well, there is no compromise on excellence. Uh, today, the vast uh, differences, uh, there are vast differences in Europe uh, in terms of investment in and quality of uh, research. And that means lost opportunity and lost potential. Uh, all member states should be uh, in a position to produce excellence in scientific research. We propose that member states who are below the EU average increase their total investment in R&D with 50% in the next five years. And in order to reform the research system, increase their ambition, they can use EU support and they can make it part of the recovery plan. Besides confirming the 3% goal of GDP, private and public investment uh, together, we propose that member states commit uh, to raise their public R&D efforts from uh, 0.81 to 1.25% of GDP by 2030, and also to earmark 5% of this amount to joint programs and partnerships. Uh, last but not least, uh, we need to speed up the transfer of research and innovation into the economy. The excellence of Europe's uh, researchers uh, suddenly becomes tangible and visible when we see their innovation make their way to services and products uh, that we use. Um, this usually happens when the entire research system, academia, industry, public institutions, work together to take new insights all the way from early research to market deployment. Uh, this is what happened with one of our projects, uh, the Graphene flagship. Uh, back in 2013, academia, uh, academ academic and industrial researcher, they came together with a promise to take graphene material from laboratories into the European market. Ten years later, the results speak for itself. Uh, we have graphene in high-capacity batteries, in airplane parts, in motorcycle helmets, uh, just to name a few. And we need more of those success stories where people can see that we come from basic research into something that improves our everyday life. Finally, obviously, we need for Europe's talent, for people with talent, to feel at home, to feel attracted, uh, to stay and do their best here. And, uh, and this is why uh, we have developed a toolbox to address all different points of working life as a researcher uh, in order to make sure that people feel seen and welcomed and to be able to stay here and do their best. To conclude, these are two uh, specific uh, proposals. It would not be the same uh, without the European education area. And uh, this is why I'm very happily passing on the floor to uh, my colleague Margaritis. Please. <laughs> 